Malacanang clarifies that the agreement with China Sinovac for 25 million doses of COVID-19 shots is a done deal. Let's get more details on this from Maricel Halili. She joins us live from Mandaluyong City. Hi, Mase. Good afternoon. Can you please expound on this statement made by spokesman Harry Roque? Because on one hand, we have vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr. saying earlier that the government can still back out of the Sinovac deal. So what is it really? Yes, good afternoon, Sean. Actually, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque mentioned that we've already signed a term sheet. And term sheet means it's already binding. So we have a final agreement, or not necessarily final, but it's a binding agreement between the national government and Sinovac of China. But nonetheless, we still have to sign another agreement. It's the sales uh, agreement, which will indicate the specific price of uh, Sinovac. Because for now, he can only say that we have that uh, we will buy Sinovac for approximately 650 pesos per dose. But once the agreement on the sales or purchasing of uh, Sinovac uh, is finalized, it might be a different uh, price. Sean? All right. Well, okay. Clear with the price, Maset, but what about an updated timetable for the procurement of other vaccines coming from other pharmaceutical companies? I'm talking about, of course, of Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and others. Mm -hmm. um, Sean, actually, during the press briefing of Secretary uh, Roque earlier, he reiterated the timetable uh, specifically mentioned by vaccine czar uh, Carlito uh, Galvez. He still said that um, the, the Pfizer or the vaccine which will come from America might come in first, but uh, it will just be a limited uh, supply based on the agreement between the national government and the COVAX facility of the World Health Organization. But it may come this uh, February, considering that it's the only vaccine for now that has EUA as approved by the Food and Drug Administration. So aside from Pfizer, it might be followed by Sinovac and AstraZeneca. All right, so now that let's focus on Pfizer. Pfizer has already secured an EUA here in the Philippines. What does Malacanang and other experts have to say about this new report that came out about deaths in Norway when fi the Pfizer vaccine was administered to some elderly? A member of the vaccine panel earlier is also one of the speakers during the press briefing of uh, Secretary uh, Roque this afternoon. Um, he and the Secretary uh, Roque said that uh, they both think that uh, there must be an investigation to be made in uh, Norway to ensure that what's, what's the cause of the death of the 20 plus senior citizens who died apparently after uh, having vaccinated by uh, Pfizer. Um, uh, the medical uh, expert mentioned that uh, if we compare it to the inoculation made in UK, in US, Canada, and other rich countries, there are no reports about deaths due to the vaccination. So uh, they are saying that the cause of death in Norway might not be directly uh, attributed to the vaccine, but there might be other factors that uh, must be considered during the inoculation or when the inoculation happened in Norway. So we have to wait for the result of the investigation before uh, having a conclusive uh, or a conclusion on uh, what happened in Norway. All right, thanks for that clarification. Now, moving on to all this talk about a new community quarantine status. Is it true in any way, Maset, that government will be imposing such a new classification um, so far called the uh, quote-unquote new normal for low-risk areas very soon? Mm -hmm. Sean, actually, there is no final decision yet whether uh, they will declare a new normal in uh, some places or some areas in the country. But uh, it is one of the ideas brought by Secretary Roque during the uh, uh, dialogue or the meeting with the members of the interagency task force. Um, Secretary Roque uh, mentioned that some of the cabinet members also want to declare a new normal in areas that has uh, no transmission of the COVID uh, disease for the longest time because he thinks that it's about time for these areas to go back to normal. But like what I said earlier, they still have to finalize this uh, kind of community quarantine classification. All right, and how did spokesman Roque describe the president's recent meeting with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi? Uh, what is the next step of the palace given all the things that they discussed? 
He said that uh, it's cordial. The meeting was cordial. It happened during the uh, weekend. And uh, one of the topics that were discussed during the uh, meeting was uh, the plan of uh, China to donate uh, about 500,000 vaccines to the Philippines. And aside from that, they also reiterated that they still want to work with the Philippines when it comes to the infrastructure program, particularly the build, build, build. So we still have to wait and see what will happen next. All right, speaking of what happens next, what can we expect from President Duterte's address to the nation later on today or later tonight? Mm -hmm. um, Sean, if uh, we've uh, based on our observation on the recent uh, public uh, engagement or the talks to the public of uh, the president, he usually mentioned uh, members of the government or government employees who are involved in uh, corruption. He usually enumerates the names of these uh, employees who are involved in uh, graft and corruption. And maybe uh, we can expect some uh, uh, discussion about COVID-19 because it's one of the usual topics being discussed every after IATF meeting. All right, thanks so much for all the time and insight. Maricel Halili joining us live from Mandaluyong City.